This is Algebra 2, Lesson 2.1, uh, Linear Equations. So I'm hoping most of this content is review, um, since this is Algebra 2, but I wanted to kind of briefly go over linear functions again. Uh, a linear function is basically just a line. So you're going to have your axis, you're going to have a line, you're going to have a constant rate of change. straight, and the base of the word linear is line, okay? Um, slope is kind of what we call that rate of change. Usually we use the letter M to represent slope, and if we have an ordered pair, um, some points on the line, we can calculate the slope by looking for the vertical change, and then dividing it by the horizontal change. So sometimes we say rise over run, Rise being how much it goes up, and rise being how much it goes over. Vertical change divided by horizontal change. And that can result in a negative number too if you're going down every time you move over, but we'll look at some examples of that in a second. Slope-intercept form is probably the most common thing we're used to seeing for linear functions. Y equals mx plus b. And we already talked about is the slope. And as the name says, slope-intercept form, B then would be the intercept. Specifically, it is the y-intercept, okay? Another format that you might see, especially maybe if you don't have the y-intercept, or maybe the y-intercept in the context of whatever situation doesn't make too much sense, is M, uh, parenthesis x minus x1 plus y1. Again, M is the slope. And then x1, y1 would be any point on the line. It could be the y-intercept, but it doesn't have to be the y-intercept. And then the last form that we're going to talk about is standard form. Usually that's ax plus by equals c. And this one is looking at kind of both the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So the uh, x-intercept would be a c divided by a, and then the y-intercept would be a c divided by b. Okay, let's try some of these in some examples. The first one says, write an equation for each line in slope-intercept form. Uh, the first one is giving me a, um, a graph, a picture. So I'm going to try to write an equation like this, which means I need the slope and I need the intercept. Now the slope, I could use the formula, right? I could find some ordered pairs. I could subtract those uh, values. I could divide those values. But in this case, because I have a picture, it's actually going to be much easier to count rise over run. So all I need is any two points. It doesn't matter which two I picked. I'm highlighting a whole bunch of options but from one point to the other, rise over run. So that's vertical change, horizontal change. This is going up two, and then it's going to the right one. So my slope is going to be rise two, run one, and two divided by one is two. Then I need the intercept. The intercept is wherever the line crosses the y-axis, and in this case, that is one unit down from the origin. So I will label the coordinates of that point, but basically the intercept is negative one because it is one down from the origin. So my equation in mx plus b form is going to be y equals 2x minus one. Now the thing about y equals mx plus b is we could technically also write the intercept first as long as the slope gets the x. Doesn't matter which one's first, which one's second. This is conventionally the way we do it, but they're both correct. Next one, it gives me two points instead. So I could graph these, right? If I had some graph paper, I could count three to the right, two up. I could count zero to the right, 11 up. I could plot those points. I could count the rise over run. But that's the point of the formula, is rather than having to draw out a picture, all I need to do is subtract, and it'll tell me how much it increases both vertically and horizontally. So I'm going to label the points, first point x, y, second point x, y, and then I'll use the slope formula that I wrote at the top, 
So I need to subtract the y values on top. That's the horizontal change. So I'm going to go 11, take away 2. Then I need to subtract the x values on the bottom. Horizontal change, 0, take away 3. 11, take away 2 is 9. 0, take away 3 is negative 3. And then we're going to divide. 9 divided by negative 3, that is negative 3. That is my m value. Next, I need the intercept. Well, it just so happens that I have the intercept right here. Remember, your intercept, your y-intercept is always going to be where x is 0. So that means 11 is my b value. So I can go y equals negative 3 x plus 11. And remember, if you wanted to flippity-floppity those, 11 minus 3x, they are both correct. Just conventionally, we go mx plus b, not b plus mx. Next example, write in slope-intercept form. So I have an example that is in point-slope form, and then I have an example that is in standard form, and we're going to convert both of these into mx plus b. So first of all, I'm going to distribute to get rid of those parentheses, and then after that, I will combine some like terms. So when I distribute 2 times x from 2x plus... 2 times 4, we have to multiply the number in front of everything inside, and then I have some like terms here. So 8 plus 3 is 11, and that's it. So we distribute to get rid of the parentheses, and then combine like terms. Now I have figured out that my slope was 2, still 2, my intercept is 11. We are going to convert this one as well, letter B, 2x plus 3y equals 12. Uh, to do that, I need to get y all by itself. So I need to move the 2x. Um, to do that, I'm going to go minus 2x on both sides. When we do this, we have non-like terms. So you don't actually go 12 take away 2 is 10. They stay as two separate pieces, 12 take away 2x. Okay. Uh, you can put the negative 2x in front, plus 12 in the back, to be an mx plus b, but you don't really have to. Next, we're going to divide by 3. When we divide by 3, every piece gets divided by 3, okay? So that's 12 divided by 3 is 4, and I'm actually going to leave this 2 thirds. 2 divided by 3 is 2 thirds. I don't need to get a decimal. And that's kind of nice because it actually gives me my slope in fraction form, so I have my rise is go down 2, and my run is go right 3. Down 2, right 3. Down 2, right 3. If I were graphing it, that'd be really, really easy, right? I would start at positive 4, I'd go down 2, right 3. Down 2, right 3, and it would give me a nice line. Doesn't ask us to graph it, but okay. Last example. As Darren drives, he watches his gas gauge to see how much gas he has left. He starts out with a full tank of gas, 16.4 gallons. The car gets 20 miles per gallon, which means he uses 0.05 gallons for each mile he drives. Write a linear equation in slope-intercept form to model the situation. So for slope-intercept form, I need the starting value and I need the rate of change. So here's my starting value. We start with 16.4 gallons. And here's my rate of change, that's my m. And I circled the word uses because he is using it, so it is subtracting it, so we need a negative value. Okay? So if I'm writing my y equals mx plus b, uh, I need negative 0.05x plus 16.4. And this is kind of one where the context makes more sense to write it backwards, so I'm going to write it both ways. Because if we start with that much and we use up this much, it's nice to see that it should be decreasing as we go along. So, how much gas will be left after he drives 175 miles? Well, we're using x to represent miles, so I'm going to replace x with 175. And again, it doesn't matter which version of the equation you use, with the b first or the b last. I need to replace the x with 175. So, let's go here. 16.4 minus 0.05 times... 175. That means he has 7.65 gallons of gas left.
how far ahead can he travel before he has less than two gallons remaining? So now we are using y as two instead of substituting a number for x, we're substituting a number in for y. So I'm going to keep this same equation, 16.4 minus 0.05x. We want to know when he's going to have two gallons of gas left. So I'm going to solve this by using inverse operations. I'm going to minus both sides, divide both sides. So I'm going to minus 16.4, and we make sure we do that on both sides to keep things equal. Uh, let's go 2 take away 16.4, and that gives me negative 14.4. I'm going to come to the side here since I don't have enough space, but it would be nicer if we could write it underneath. What did I say? And then we have negative 0.05 times x, so to undo a times, we are going to divide. And it is important to keep that negative, otherwise we have a negative x if we just divided by 0.05. Okay, so those are going to eliminate. We'll have x equals, we have negative 14.4 divided by negative 0.05, and that is 288. So he can go 288 miles, and he'll have two gallons of gas left in his car. Okay, that's it for these notes. Good luck on the exercises, and please let me know if you have questions.